Welcome in. It's another edition of the Dudley Hilton Show talking University of Pikeville Bear football. I'm Andrew Joyce, your host, and coming up tonight, we'll talk about Bell Haven. Last week, the Bears making the long trip to Mississippi and the regular season finale. It's coming up this week. I'll be joined by the coach, and we'll talk to some of the Bear players again tonight. It's one of my favorite parts of the show. No offense, Coach. I hear you. But uh, you and I, we, we've talked you know, for decades now. It seems to be the same old story out of you. It, it's typical coach speak. Uh, you guys, you sandbag before teams that you're favored against, and it's the same old, same old. But, Coach, we've got to talk about Bell Haven. Uh, tough trip for this Bear team. Longest trip of the year by far. You're facing a team that's playing for the West Division Championship and a uh, tough trip for the Bears. Well, it was, but uh, we, we showed a lot more improvement. I, I think our special teams kind of let us down down there that day a little bit. But uh, other than that, uh, uh, you know, the heat, 85 degrees, yeah. who would have thought uh, in November you'd be playing an 85-degree game? You know, I always dreamed of that when I was in high school going south and playing a good warm game well believe me i got to go one <laughs> this saturday uh, the past saturday but it was 85 degrees at kickoff and uh, andrew it was uh, it was hot i think it took us a little while to get used to it but our kids uh, i was proud that uh, you know sometimes you worry about your kids condition but i thought we held up well at a temperature like that and uh I, you know, I, I just thought we had a lot of good bright spots and, and not taking nothing uh, away from them. They, they you know, uh, they, they was a good football team, but, uh, uh, you know, we just still made a few mental mistakes. But on the whole, uh, we moved the ball and we played pretty good defense at times. Sure, and, and dug a hole early. And when you do that in those type of conditions against a good team, it, it really it hampers your ability to uh, knock off a team like yeah, that. Well, again, you know, Again, we got a good, well called uh, uh, football game. You know, sometimes when you go that far away, you worry about the referee. But uh, the first drive, they drove down the field, and we had them down there on the three yard line and stopped them. And you know, we just kept uh, we kept kind of pushing them, and I sure didn't see no dangers. But uh, they called us for uh, just wouldn't let it loose of them, and uh, the boy was still up on his feet. And you know, and all year long uh, they've stood us up, and then uh, I'm trying to get mine to be aggressive. But we got a we got a penalty called on us right there give them half distance to the goal line which put the ball on the one yard line and and that was their first touchdown but I really believe if uh, if we hadn't got that call at that time uh, or the game would have could have been a little different early in the game that we give up that touchdown and come back and uh, you know and and uh, they ran a punt back on us and uh, before we knew it uh, we were down but but on a whole uh, you know uh, uh, those things going to happen on us, you know. And again, on the punt return, we had the boy dead in his uh, uh, in his uh, spot. We we had a down there, a guy down there and hit him, and uh, he just bounced away from. Him, had another guy hit him, and then he was off for the races. Comes down to execution at some points, and sometimes just a simple play can change the tone of the game. 24-14, Bellhaven wins, longest trip. How did the players respond to the travel? Well, I think they held up a lot better than us coaches. <laughs> uh, my neck is still sore, but, uh, you know, talking to a few players, they, they couldn't believe we was already there, and I'm thinking, boys, we've been on the bus for 13 hours. What do you mean? <laughs> and, and But I think they slept, and, you know, they get their headsets on, and I think that's why they're used to sleeping anyway. So uh, they handled it well, and I uh, never heard no complaints. So couldn't use that as far as excuse uh, uh, us coaches could because I got pretty uh, stiff and I'd listen to some of the other coaches complain and carry on. But uh, that's a long haul on a charter bus, that's for sure. Coach, that's the aging process. Oh, it's okay. Is that what that is? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And, and I'm like you. I, I can't handle those long trips either. Uh, of coming off Bell Haven, of course, you're going to the regular season finale. What's the attitude among the players? Well, I think they're good. I, I just, you know, I, again, our kids, uh, I think they felt better. They didn't quit on us. They had every reason to, to quit on us when we went down to Bethel. They quit on us down there and uh, and end up getting killed. The other day we got down 14 to nothing and, you know, and, and uh, but they picked up their spirits. They, they fought hard the rest of the day for me, and, and I was proud of that point. I told them after the game, uh, you know, guys, that's one thing we've grown up a little bit. We just didn't come down here and lay down and, and quit and feel sorry for ourselves. So uh, hopefully we use that, and, uh, you know, again, uh, uh, I think their attitude's good. We hadn't practiced, so uh, we're practicing after this show tonight, and, uh, uh, you know, I, I just I just think we're, uh, we're staying on a routine and, and hope we're improving on it. 
Last year, uh, late in the season, team had lost some games and a little bit deflated. This year, the record doesn't show it, but we've seen vast improvement in this team from last year to this year. This is a better football team. This is a team that's very close to being one of the teams that we can talk about being among the top among in, in their division. Very close, just a few plays here, a, a few plays there. Have you seen that out of the players? Do they recognize that this is a much improved team from last year? Well, I, I feel like they do, and, and I think everybody that's watched us all year long knows we got a lot tougher schedule this year than we had last year. Sure. And you know, here this year, you know, Georgetown came out in the rankings this morning. Here they're number one. Cumberland's number nine. Uh, Cumberland U is number uh, 14, or Bethel's number 14, and Cumberland U is 18. So, right. so out of our seven losses, that's that's four of them right there. Right. And uh, you know, I challenge anybody to want to play four of the top 20 teams in the country in in AI, and, and that's what we've done. The other three, you know, uh, Kentucky Christians, uh, they've made a lot of noise this year. Uh, Lindsey Wilson, uh, they kind of stumped their toes since our game, and then the uh, the other loss. Uh, you know, have to. Uh, I can't think of it right now, but but anyway, that's that's who we kind of lost to, and and uh, you know, I just feel like it. Uh, the schedule was a lot tougher this year because the games we won last year, three of them we didn't get to play this year, so right. uh, that that made a lot of difference there. Wins and losses, uh, sometimes that's all folks look at. Are you pleased with this team in comparison to last year's team, taking the record out of it? Well, I'm pleased if we can keep our players and retain the players that we've worked against. Again, right. last year we worked so hard that we ended up losing four or five kids that we should have retained that didn't stay with us. And, and you know, hopefully that don't happen to us this year. Hopefully our kids see they got a good place to work out in in the new Hope Center and, and hope give them a good reason to stay here, uh, to, to lift the weights, get faster and get quicker. And and uh, I just think now we got more of a drawing to make you stay here, or make you want to stay here, and at the University of Pikeville. So you know I, I think things are going to be better. But as far as please, yeah, I mean we losing five seniors, and uh, you know one of them's got hurt. The other four uh, good leaders for us and everything. But uh, you know. Uh, you know, we're going to Union this week. They're losing 15 seniors, and right. everybody we play at least lose 15 or 20 seniors. So hopefully next year we're we're talking about us having at least 10 or 12 seniors. Hope you're at that. We'll have uh, 15 or 18 like everybody else, you sure. know. So main thing we've got to do, Andrew, is retain the kids that we spent a whole year on, teach them how to be linebacker or offensive line or running back or split in or DB and – and as long as they come back and this time is not wasted, we're in good shape. But now, you know, you can't, uh, you can't stop them. When they want to go home to mama, it's hard to stop them. You got it. Dudley Hilton, it is the Dudley Hilton Show. We're talking University of Pikeville Bear football. We'll talk to some of the players coming up as we wrap up Bellhaven and we'll take a look ahead at Union College coming up Saturday in Barberville. Uh, Coach, uh, before we wrap up uh, Bellhaven, have to talk about the health of the Bears. Uh, how did we come out Saturday? Well, you know, as far as I know, we came out good. Our, you know, kids, uh, they've learned how to play a little bit. I think Zeke White was beat up a little bit, but I think he's on a hole. He's all right. And, and again, uh, you know, uh, I guess our kids this time of year, you know, they're all beat up a little bit, but uh, they're they're fighting hard. And, and again, that's, uh, that's what we're looking for. But I think we're all right, Andrew, on that part of it. Difference between injuries and pain. Oh yeah, and you know again that's uh, you know again that's what I was pleased with my kids our Saturday. They had every reason in 85 degree weather, sure. the 13 hours away to just lay down and and say uh, you know let's enjoy the sun and hurry up and get back home. But they they stayed out there and fought for the uh, University of Pike for all afternoon, and uh, I, I was just very proud of them on that uh, aspect of it. Not I was proud that we got beat, but I really think we sure. got beat by a very good football team and a good effort. Coach Dudley Hilton, he'll return with more. We'll talk about Union. When we come back, we'll step into the Bears' den. We'll talk to some Bears players tonight. Donovan Schwalbach, one of the seniors on this U-Pike team. Brent Davis and Brandon Ball coming up. The Dudley Hilton Show presented by Appalachian Wireless. Close to the end, it's just beginning, life is getting louder. 
back in the Dudley Hilton Show presented by Appalachian Wireless and brought to you by the University of Pineville. We talk U-Pike football. I'm Andrew Joyce, your host, and we've kicked the coach out now. We step into the Bears' den, and it is truly one of my favorite parts of this show is a chance to talk to the players because in a press box, from the outside looking in, we get to see the players in helmets and don't really get to learn much about the players, but we do now, and hopefully we'll have a chance to introduce some of the players to uh, our listeners and the viewers, of course, who check out the Dudley Hilton Show. Joined now by Brent Davis, 6'3", 210-pound sophomore out of Cincinnati. Brent Davis, welcome to the Dudley Hilton Show. Thank you. Love talking to student athletes, and you notice student comes first. We talk about academics on this show as well, and what your academic major is, what your future plans are. Uh, I'm a criminal justice major, and um, let's say I've considered a junior uh, in the classroom, yes. and afterwards I want to be a Kentucky State Trooper. So. I've heard that a few times. Yeah. I've heard that, heard that a few times, and uh, you come from Cincinnati, Ohio, not yes, northern Kentucky. No, sir. Cincinnati. So, Cincinnati, yes, sir. Ohio. How's football different in Cincinnati than northern Kentucky? Uh, it's a, I don't know. I want to say it's a lot different, but uh, we like to... Uh, we like to do a little bit more helmet popping yeah. than the Northern Kentucky guys, so we like to get after it a little bit more. We're going to talk about that. Talk about your football background. How early did you start playing, and let's talk about where you played high school. I play, well, let's say I started when I was around seven years old. Right. Uh, flag football. Yeah. Which is, you know, you got to be very athletic, you know, to dodge the, you know, flag sure. takers. Uh, then I progressed, and then I went to Greenwood High School, which is right. a six A school, and. Uh, Four, played four years there, four-year starter, and then carried on. Greenwood High School. I know there are some Cincinnati area teams that, that play Northern Kentucky mm -hmm. teams. Did you play a Northern Kentucky no, team not. When, no. when you were playing? No. So uh, there are quite, there's some quite good battles there traditionally. Uh, I have to say, uh, I don't have the numbers, but I, I think the Cincinnati side comes out on yes, top yes, usually. Sir. Uh, it's a great brand of football. You're also a transfer from the yes, University sir. of Cincinnati. How did you arrive at UPike? Well, uh, I walked on at the University of Cincinnati and, you know, went through the whole process. Um, I learned a lot of things, got stronger, faster, uh, but, you know, things weren't cutting it out on the field and I wanted to play. There's nothing like playing football. Sure. So I found uh, Coach Brown. He, he sought me out and we got to talking and now I'm here and I'm happy. There you go. You've been here a year now? Yes, sir. Playing under a Kentucky high school coaching legend, Dudley Hilton. Yes, sir. 345 career high school wins, three-time state champion. He retired as the winningest coach in Kentucky high school football. What's that experience been like? It's an honor. It really is. You can, you can tell. I mean, he has a presence. You know when you go into a room and Coach Hilton's there, you know, it's, you're, you're getting ready to play some, you know, you're going to play great football. Sure. It's good to be under a guy like that. It really is. It's an honor. Defensive unit, I know the linebacking unit, uh, a close-knit group of guys. Mm -hmm. What kind of strides has the defensive unit made from the start of this season up until last week at Bellhaven? Well, you can tell. I mean, at the beginning of the year, uh, we weren't on the same page. But week by week, we get better. We learn the system a little bit better each week. And we pick up on things. And last week, we battled. We battled hard. We, we, stu we hung in there. And, you know, next week, got to do even better. So. Seems like the defense from the outside looking in. Mm -hmm. I'm not in the film room. I, I'm not there when it's broken down. I don't get the, the opportunity to see uh, the repel, replays run over mm -hmm. and over and over. What kind of arm tackle was that, Davis? That's, that's awful. Yeah, and I'm just, that's just right. an example. I'm not there, but it seems like about week four this year, it, it really kicked in for the defensive unit. Yes, it did. You can tell. Um, Things the saying is it just clicks and we really did we just clicked everything just started happening And you know when you, once you once you see that once you feel it There's nothing like it. So what was your high school career like uh, as far as wins and losses? Did? Well, we were a successful program. We never made it you know to the semis or state or anything like that But uh, we were a winning program sure so how tough is that for a team that now you've lost six straight We've seen the strides. We've seen this team improve. The wins and losses don't necessarily bear out what we have seen. How tough is it coming from a successful program? Not used to losing. Dudley Hilton, not used to right. losing. Six straight. How tough is that? It's tough, but it's a challenge. And I, I look forward to a challenge. This whole team, you can tell, looks forward to a sure. challenge. So, you know, you get a challenge like that in front of you, you have to battle. 
and battle and battle, work harder and win. How close is this team to being really good? Very close. Very close. Or One a year play. away? I mean, yeah, a year away or a play away. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sure. So. Going to get a win Saturday against Union. Yes, sir. And uh, we'll take that and we'll build on it for next year. Brent Davis, let's talk about uh, your future plans down the road besides State Trooper. Uh, what's, what's in store for us from Brent Davis? Well, um, I do have a, a pretty uh, pretty steady girlfriend right now. And I uh, plan on going back after the football is over, plan on going back home. And uh, yeah, hopefully yeah, the law enforcement job does work out. And uh, just trying to be a successful husband. There you so. go. Leave leave the University of Pikeville as its leading tackler. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that'll be awesome. some records. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Yeah. All right, we'll take that as, as well. Brent Davis, well-spoken, 6'3", 210-pound sophomore out of Cincinnati, Ohio, our guest in the Bears' Den. Let's get a win Saturday against the Union wrap it up the right way. Yes, sir. All right. Brent Davis, when we come back, we'll go to the offensive side of the football. Brandon Ball coming up on the Dudley Hilton Show, presented by Appalachian Wireless. Welcome back in the Dudley Hilton Show, presented by Appalachian Wireless. I'm Andrew Joyce. We talk U Pike football. The Bears coming off a 24 14 loss to Bell Haven Saturday in Mississippi. 85 degree day, and we've had freezing temperatures. We've had snow, and the Bears team, while conditioning during the summer months up to the season opener, we saw some of those warm days, but uh, I'm not sure the players accustomed to uh, those type of temperatures in Mississippi. But uh, the Bears players uh, did not quit in this game, played till the end. Joined by another one of those players now, and, uh, one of those players that the Heat might be a little tougher on. Those guys in the trenches, they got it going on. They carry a little extra weight. I can say that because my son is and was one. So I can talk about the, those guys. Uh, we lovingly call them the Hogs, and I'm joined by one now. Brandon Ball, 6'3", 315-pound freshman out of East Bernstadt. That's North Laurel country. Yes, sir. Welcome to the Dudley Hilton Show, Brandon. Freshman, big guy, and now starter at right tackle. What's the adjustment been like from high school to U Pike? Uh, it's a it's a pretty big adjustment. It's a lot different. I come from an offense where we just ran the ball, sure. basically the whole time, and you know it's a big adjustment coming from that to you know throwing the ball a lot more. Right. Different blocking schemes, obviously, for those guys up front. A lot different. Brandon Ball, we talk about student athletes, and that means we'll step into the classroom. What's your academic major? Are you declared just a freshman? Are you declared major yet? And what are you planning to do in the future? Uh, I'm an undecided major. Sure. I'm just getting my core classes. I'm not real sure yet. Maybe going to coaching someday? Maybe. We've talked to some of the UPIC players, and some of those guys, they uh, they have that in, in mind. They, they want to be like Dudley Hilton. Yeah. And, and when I say that, I get the same kind of response from some of the some of the players. A little giggle, a chuckle, because I don't think any of you guys can picture yourselves being like Dudley Hilton. He's old school, isn't he? Yeah. How does he compare to your high school coach? Uh, they were they were a lot kind of the same, yeah. kind of that power football. Sure. That's what you know, you're in the eye formation a lot, and you right. know, ran it at him. Mountain football. How's mountain football? on the high school level different than the Mid-South Conference? It's a lot different. It's a lot faster. So I'm used to these, you know, slow games, kind of running the ball constantly. It's kind of speeds up the clock a little bit, you know, running it constantly. But uh, it's just, it's a lot different. As a freshman coming into summer camp, I guess late July, early August, yeah. what was the adjustment like for you as opposed to summer practice on the high school level, what was the, what was summer practice like this year that was different than what you'd been used to? Uh, it was a lot more tiring, I could say. It kind of happened. It happened all you know within two weeks. Right. We had to learn so much. You know, like coming in as a freshman, I had to learn the entire offense. Sure. And uh, it's just a lot of it changed. You know. 
How tough is that? How much more complicated is it on the college level than your high school playbook? Well, uh, we have all the numbers and stuff we have to memorize and such. So, yeah, my offense, uh, we just, you know, the quarterback ran to the sideline, got to play, sure. come back to the huddle, and here, you know, got to memorize all the numbers, and it's quite a bit harder. How, at what point in the season did Brandon Ball feel comfortable with the offense, with his assignments to where as the play was called, you get to the line, you knew exactly what what you were doing because I've been in those situations. You get to you get to the line or the play is getting ready to start and you're still second guessing what my assignment is. When did it click for you during this year? It's it's taken a while because you know I've I've played guard probably half the season. Sure. I've been beside you know a junior center and he's helped me out a lot and uh, it's kind of just recently you know clicked for me and I'm getting to where I understand the offense real well. Let's talk about your football background. When did Brandon Ball start playing football? I started playing football in the eighth grade. Okay, a little bit late. A little late. A lot of those guys we talk to, they'll start six, seven, eight years old, flag football. Yeah. Uh, and But you started in eighth grade, so it's been a process for you. When did you realize that this is something you wanted to do beyond high school? Uh, probably my sophomore year. Yeah. Uh, as of the year, I kind of I started every game as my sophomore. And I started every game from then out. So. There you go. And uh, as a mountain guy, obviously you were familiar with Dudley Hilton um, at North Laurel, not that far removed from Bell County, but uh, Dudley Hilton, a legend. Folks know him across the, the Commonwealth from, from North Laurel to uh, Northern Kentucky. What was your first impression of playing under Dudley Hilton rather than just hearing about Dudley Hilton? It's a... Uh... It's quite a bit different. Yeah, you know, I've heard, you know, different things about Coach Hilton, and I really, I think Coach Hilton's a good coach. Uh, it's a, it's a great experience, you know, playing under him. Have you had a chance to see North Laurel since you've uh, arrived at UPAC? I've, I've got to see one game. Yeah. In our, our bye week. And, and watch uh, them play. What were your thoughts going back watching a team that you had played for, and, uh, and now having a different perspective from the Mid South Conference level, did it look different to you? Yeah, it was a lot different. Yeah. Looking at all the old formations we used to run, and it's just everything's changed. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a uh, different game. Brandon Ball, six three, three hundred fifteen pound freshman out of North Laurel High School, our guest. And uh, Brandon, let's talk about the atmosphere in the locker room. Let's talk about your teammates. And this team, while the wins and losses, they've not been there the way Coach Hilton wants, the way the players want, the way the fans want. We would love to see this record flip-flop 7-3. and three. We'd love to see that. Hasn't been the case, but we have seen the strides this team's made. We've seen how close it is. What's the, ad the attitude like among the players after the last couple of weeks and heading into the regular season finale? Well, I really think we've, we've progressed. Where offense is starting to, you know, click a little more. Like in the second half of Bellhaven, we True. started moving the ball a lot more, and I think we've uh, we've come a ways. Union you Saturday, uh, you'll travel back down to uh, a cl little closer to your neck of the woods. I would imagine you'll have some family there checking yeah. out the game. Uh, what's that like for you to be able to go closer to home? I know the University of Cumberland's one of those trips as well, down yeah. a little closer to home. I'm uh, I'm pretty excited. I'm, I'll just be about 45 minutes away from home. Right. A lot of my a lot of my friends and family's gonna be there. I'm pretty excited. What's your plans for the future, Brandon? As far as football goes, I I like to I like it here. I I, I plan on staying and uh, continuing college. You've got the hoops athletics facility, of course, uh, tremendous weight facility now for the off season work. Uh, what are some of the off season goals for Brandon Ball? I'd like to get a lot stronger, you know, and you know, hopefully get better on the field, take that over to the field. We're seeing you at 315 pounds today, somewhere in that neck of the woods. Where do you want to be next year? Uh, a little a little lighter, turn some of that a little bit of fat to muscle. There you go. Brandon Ball, 6'3", 315-pound freshman out of North Laurel, our guest on the Dudley Hilton Show. And, Brandon, uh, it's been our pleasure to have you on. Look forward to seeing you on Saturday. Thank you. Let's get a win over Union. Let's do it. All right. The Dudley Hilton Show, we will return.
and we'll talk more U Pike football. When we come back, we'll talk to one of the seniors. There aren't many on this U Pike team. Donovan Schwalbach when we come back on the Dudley Hilton Show. The University of Pikeville has developed a Master of Business Administration with you in mind. Whether you want to embark on a new career path, learn to do your job better, or increase your earning potential, the MBA program at the University of Pikeville is ready to help you advance. Designed for the working professional, you don't have to put your life on hold to come back to school. It's your time, your university. UPike MBA. Welcome back in the Dudley Hilton Show, presented by Appalachian Wireless. I'm Andrew Joyce, your host, as we talk UPike football. The Bears winding down the regular season Saturday in Barbersville, taking on Union College. And we continue in the Bears' den. Coach Dudley Hilton will rejoin us shortly. Right now, we talk to another senior on this Bear team. Uh, it's a small group, just a handful of seniors but uh, an important part of this team, the leadership that they provide to this very young team. We've talked to so many young players throughout the course of the year. Joined now by Donovan Schwalbach, a six foot, 190 pound senior out of Amelia, Ohio. Welcome to the Dudley Hilton Show. It's good to be here. We talk academics with freshmen, they're undecided. We talk academics with seniors and they have things locked in. Uh, they may not have their first job necessarily nailed down, but they certainly have much better uh, idea of what they want to do and, and where they want to land. That's the process of college. Donovan Schwalbach, as we talk about your academic major and your future plans, let's hear about that because I've heard some stories. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I'm double majoring in criminal justice and sociology, and uh, I plan to eventually be a, a canine unit, hopefully back home somewhere somewhere close. There you go. But. We'll see how that works out. I want to go into law, law enforcement. Not only a double major, criminal justice and sociology, but uh, also, uh, rumor is, a uh, three-time academic all-conference member. That's incredible. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it, it, I, th I think I have developed some pretty good study habits here, here at Pikeville. And uh, back in high school, it wasn't, wasn't the case of that case all the time. Yeah. I think, I think being here and making up my mind that I wanted to do that three-time academic all-conference. Uh, you've been on the dean's list each semester at UPike. Obviously, you had some study habits when you got here. Yes, sir. Uh, how tough is it? We talk about student athletes, and obviously the student part is very important. A lot of this UPike team and, and small college football not going to land in the NFL. That's not how you're going to make your living. But as you prepare for life, students a very important part of that. And how tough is that to find balance between practice, between games, between 12 to 14 hour drives on a bus and playing a game, getting back on the bus. And how tough is it to find that balance between academics and what you have to do on the athletic field? Well, the hard part is finding the time to find that balance and to find time to keep your studies up. And a lot of times I find myself bringing my stuff on the trips with me. Sure. And even, even having to stay up late and then get up early for practice. And it, it wears on you. but. But it's something that I feel like that I need to do for myself and for my future. So, young guys on the team, they see you do this. They see you take your books. Uh, they see you take your your study things with you on trips. Uh, yeah, and I, I I hope that when I do it, it kind of encourages them to do it too. And and there's there's some that I, th that I think that it helps them out and try yeah. to try to get them to develop some good study habits. I would imagine it would be a huge benefit to a young player to see a senior, a guy who's been an academic all-conference performer, a guy who uh, has been on the dean's list and realizes the importance of academics to see that on those trips and to realize that this is not a high school trip that's two hours, I forget about schoolwork, <laughs> just, but it's, it's business-like and uh, it's about learning the lessons of life. I think you're a great example for the young players. Donovan Schwalbach, uh, canine officer. Why canine officer? Well, I've, ever since I've been little, I've been an animal person. Yeah. I've, even when I was little, I kind of wanted to I was always interested in like being a zookeeper in that, but and then I kind of figure out that here I had to take a criminal justice class with one of the sure. old professors was here, and I liked it, so it kind of that's where I got the the criminal justice from, and then I kind of tied animals in with the canine unit, and plus I had an uncle that was one, and he was always we always, we're always around his dog, and and it was a it was just like it, I liked how they how he was trained so well, and he was almost just like like a partner for right. him. Great, so. it's a. It's a great story. Donovan, uh, we talk about uh, uh, 
uh, academics, let's step back and talk about your football gra background as well. When did you start playing? Let's talk about your high school days and how you arrived here. Well, I, uh, I started playing real young. I was probably around five when I started playing Pee Wee. And, uh, and I eventually went up to uh, Amelia High School and played. I was a three-year starter there. Started, started playing my sophomore year when our, uh, the guy was behind. He ended up getting hurt. Yeah. So I started from there on out. And then uh, after high school, I went to Wittenberg University. Right. And I was only there for a semester, and I just wasn't feeling it there. I didn't really like it. So, And uh, I knew some people that were here. So it was either come here and play football or go back home to community college. So right. I wanted to continue playing football. Good decision on so, your part? Yes, sir. Uh, Donovan Schwalbach, a six foot, hundred and ninety pound senior. Um, you've seen some changes at the university since you've arrived. You've seen different coaches. Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. How has this program, not this team, not last year's team, but how has this program evolved since you arrived? Uh, when I first got here, there was you talk to people on campus, and they wouldn't almost wouldn't even know there was a football program. Sure. Wouldn't even know there was a game on Saturday. But but now you see support everywhere, and you see see the community getting involved and for example uh, Jeffrey Hoops building us the facility and right. when I first got here you would I don't think you would ever seen anything anybody wanting to get that involved and I think it's a good thing it's I think hopefully it just continues to keep keep progressing. Just uh, growing and evolving is the football program let's talk about campus campus has changed yes, since you yeah. arrived as well and not just uh, the the footprint of the campus with the the new construction, but the number of students, the growth that you that you've seen. How different is campus today from when you arrived? Oh, it's you, you can tell when you try to find a parking spot. You got to you got <laughs> to walk two miles. But, yeah. So, but that's a good thing. You there's a lot more people in classes, and there's a, a lot more friends you can have, and a lot more people you see every day. Yeah. But it's, new cafeteria has the food improved. Yeah. I would, I would say it has. <laughs> okay. Uh, let, let's talk about the energy on campus because uh, I've talked to a lot of folks from different areas, from different educational divisions, and I, I hear different perspective from athletics administration to administrators to students. And let's talk about the energy on campus. What does it feel like on campus as compared to when you arrive? Um, well, just being, on, being an athlete, you can tell that there now there is support and there's a uh, for every for every team really um, before there wasn't that many people who would stay on campus during the right. weekends and stuff and now they now you see more people sticking around looking forward to the games of of every sport so it's it's there's a lot more student activity and a lot more enthusiasm Dudley Hilton coach Brown coach Holland uh, and of course this football program growing evolving and uh, developing a program that doesn't happen overnight is the University of Pikeville football program headed in the right direction? Definitely, definitely. You can you, you can just tell by the the players' attitudes that when I first got here, if we'd lost a couple of games, they everybody would just lay down and sure. kind of throw the towel in for the season. But as you can tell, it's, it's not happening this year. We're right. still going out and competing every week, and and even, we're hoping to leave on a winning note this season and look forward to next season. Your final game coming up Saturday. Yes. How does that feel to Donovan Schwalbach? Uh, it's it's going to be a change. It's going to be I'm going to miss it a lot, and I'll, I'll be back to to continue watching the games and as much as I can. So it's like a lot of guys that have played sports all their lives, regardless of what the sport is. For the last time, you put on the uniform, and uh, it'll be a special day for you. Yes, it will. And uh, uh, we will remember you, seniors on Saturday, and uh, hopefully the Pike can send you out with a win. Yes, sir. Be, Let's get one. Good. Yes, sir. Let's get one Saturday. Donovan Schwalbach, he's one of our seniors, six foot, 190 pounder, out of Amelia, Ohio, our guest on the Dudley Hilton Show. When we come back, we'll talk to the coach. We'll take a look at Union coming up Saturday, the Dudley Hilton Show, presented by Appalachian Wireless. The biggest thing about U Pike, you have that one-on-one -on -one with your teachers, you know everybody in your class. You have teachers who will work with you. If you need help, they'll stay after. It's a real good feeling. It's a family atmosphere. I mean, everybody here is super nice. We'll do anything in the world to help you. And it's just that homey feeling. You don't feel away, especially as a freshman. I mean, that's huge. I'm Jennifer. Join me at the University of Pikeville. Welcome back in the Dudley Hilton Show presented by Appalachian Wireless. I'm Andrew Joyce, rejoined by the coach, our coach at the University of Pikeville, Dudley Hilton. And uh, coach, 
we love talking to the players, the student athletes, and getting a chance to meet those guys and interact and hear their goals and their future plans. And these truly are uh, energetic college students who put in a lot of time in the classroom, of course, on the athletic fields, in practice, in the weight room. And uh, it's a tough juggling act, and these guys seem to have it together. Well, you know, I learn something every week just like you do, yeah. Andrew, and hear some of their comments. Uh, you know, Brent Davis handled himself well, got his head screwed on right. The ball boy, uh, you know, being a freshman, you can see that he's uh, – he, he's uh, he's going in the right direction, yeah. and then the swallback boy, uh, you know, just listen to him. How in the past, if they'd lost two or three games, how they wouldn't have enough to practice and and things like that. You know, Andrew, we average a hundred kids out every day of practice, right. and and a little bit over that. And uh, you know, I just listen to these three guys talk and and tell that they. Uh, you know, it's not all about football and it's not all about academics. They've got their heads screwed on yeah. right. They're trying to do the right things. And, and again, if nothing else we got out of this season, you interviewed probably uh, 18 or 20 of the finest young men up on campus that, uh, that this campus offer. And we offer a lot more, Andrew. We, sure. don't, we just picked out a few. There's, there's 60 or 70 more that I would highly recommend that could be on this show also. Through the course of their career, we want to meet them all. Uh, we we want want, to have that's them all. right. That's I think Donovan Schwalbach is the epitome of the UPI program, and and that's not sliding anyone else. Just as a senior, you can see what's happened with with Donovan coming in uh, with a guy that it hadn't worked out at his previous college. He said that he was learning study habits. He obviously figured it out because three time All Conference academic performer. He's getting it done in the classroom, and he found the balancing act a great example for young players. Oh, yes. If you had a guy you want to itemize, you know, you know, Kyle Macy type of a kid sure. that's, uh, you know, just handles himself well, and, uh, you know, I, he just admires me. I mean, I'll just admire him the way he handles himself. And, and you know, and, uh, and talking about the program, he, he was here. You know, you, we think we're still in kind of a bad time. Right. But now listen to him talk. Uh, we're in good times, and yeah. it, it makes me feel good because, again, I'm not used to all this, too, and you've said it a hundred times, but listen to young men uh, say things like he said, and it sure it sure helps me to get along, and, uh, and knowing that I'm here for a reason to help these young men to get a college education and try to help them to win this conference and win some football games, and uh, we're going to get there. I, you know, I just... You know, it's two years, and uh, hopefully uh, we can end the season on a win and uh, and go in the weight room and, and be more excited even for it next year as we was this year. How important is a win over Union to build momentum into the off season? Well, it's all important. I mean, we'd like to have a win last week, but this is the next game, and Union's uh, in the same kind of bracket we are. They're th they've won three, and we've won three. Somebody's going to win four, and and uh, you know we sure hope it's us. It's not every day. I I think I've ended my career three times with a win, and uh, that's when you win it all. And I think in college it's very important you win, win, end the season with a win. Uh, you know, it might not be for the national title, but uh, they don't come uh, come along but once in a lifetime sure. if you're lucky enough to get one someday. Sure. But but I think in the season with the wins, got to take you in the weight room and got to feel proud that uh, you know that you've uh, accomplished some things and this year and uh, hopefully uh, you know it can be a big uh, big step for us. Union, what do you know about them? What kind of style will we see? Well, they they very they've got a very good quarterback back. They got hurt last year and. Uh, He's a fifth year, a whole lot remind me of the boy from Cumberland, and and they got a heck of a tailback. They've had a little uh, bad luck on a couple of linemen, just like we have with the injury wise. But uh, uh, they, you know, they've been in some games and and they've been out of some games. Uh, they played Bethel uh, within 51 to 48 games, so that just shows you they might not have played much defense, but they played had a heck of an offense. So we're in that. They played Kentucky Christian close and. Uh, uh, that's scary. Uh, they beat Camelsville, and we beat Camelsville, and uh, they beat Bluefield, and we beat Bluefield, and uh, so you know we're we're a whole lot alike. It's just uh, uh, you know hopefully our kids are in more of an upbeat than their kids, and uh, hopefully that uh, you know we're we'll be excited about going to Union and play, and and uh, again, but they've got a very capable football sure. team just like uh, University of Pikeville does. Got to show up. 
got to play uh, the entire four quarters. Yeah, and you you know you turn over and your special teams. Uh, like I said, our special team's been great all year to last week, and uh, we kind of folded our tent a little bit, and that hurt us. And uh, but Union, this is a game that we've got to go. And, and again, we got to play good on both sides of the ball, and the special teams got to be good. Union College Saturday, it's a 1:30 kickoff in Barberville. We'll have coverage, of course, beginning at 110 on Z-Rock 1075. Also, the live stream at PikeTV.com. Dudley Hilton, Union Saturday. Let's send the seniors out the right way with a big W over the Bulldogs on Saturday. Thank you very much, Andrew. Dudley Hilton, he's our coach here at the University of Pikeville. You've been tuned to the Dudley Hilton Show, presented by Appalachian Wireless. Better service, bigger savings. Today's Appalachian Wireless. Tune in Saturday for more U-Pike football. Thanks for tuning in, everyone.